How is everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Robert Mugabe resigning as president of Zimbabwe after 37 years in office. I mean, this guy had been in office for longer than I've been alive. I'm 33 years old, born in 84. He came into office in 1980. Very long time. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard for us over here to talk about it because while we do have presidential term limits, there have been some guys that have been in Congress for a long time doing nothing. But that's a whole different story. And I digress. We're going to talk about this here. Uh, before we get into the article, I just want to say that Zimbabwe has a very complicated history. You're talking about they were once colonized by the British. You had the whole thing with when it was called Rhodesia after Cecil Rhodes from the UK. Uh, it's a big thing with racial strife. I'm sure that we'll get into this in this article. And if we don't, I'll talk about the racial stuff. But Mugabe was a very polarizing figure. He is 93 years old. So I'm not really sure how much longer he could have actually stayed in office anyway. But we'll get to all of that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and read this article. Zimbabwe's president Robert Mugabe has resigned, bringing an end to 37 years of rule and sparking jubilant celebrations in the nation's streets. A letter from Mr. Mugabe read out by the Speaker of the Parliament said the decision was voluntary and he had made it to allow a smooth transition or transfer of power. The news abruptly halted an impeachment hearing that had begun against him. Now, before we go any further, they'll probably talk about what I'm getting ready to say here, but I just want to say that there was like this military coup that was on TV. I'm not quite sure if you saw that. Uh it was supposed to be a news anchor in the seat talking to people, but instead it was a guy in a military outfit. And if I could find that, I'll place that on the screen before you. <laughs> I, and the people on Twitter were talking about, you could tell us a coup when rather than watching your local news anchor and their sport jacket dress or whatever, you got this guy and his military stuff. But people were saying that it wasn't a coup. It was a coup. It was a soft coup. It's a lot of different things that have been said. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Maybe they think Mugabe was on his way out as far as his health, and they did not want his wife to get into office. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. I don't want to jump the gun. The ruling ZANU PF party says former Vice President Emerson Man Menengawa will succeed Mr. Mugabe in power since 1980. Mr. Menengawa's sacking earlier this month triggered a political crisis. Yeah, he had fled to South Africa. Um, that might have been part of the coup. And this guy, the vice president, had been Mugabe's like right hand man, had been a so-called henchman. So if he's going to come into power, I'm not quite sure how things will change. But at least it's not Mugabe himself. It had been seen by many as an attempt to clear the way for Grace Mugabe to succeed her husband as leader and rile the military leadership who stepped in and put Mr. Mugabe under house arrest. Now, I think that might be referring to the political crisis that happened after the resignation announcement. Lawmakers roared in jubilation. And then there's a couple articles here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a couple articles here. And I'll link to this article in the box below from the BBC. It says Robert Mugabe, hero or villain. Also resignation and reaction as it happened. Back to the article. Mr. Mugabe, 93, was until his resignation, the world's oldest leader. He had previously refused to quit despite last week's military takeover and days of protests. And you got a picture here of some of the protests. According to the Constitution, his successor should be the current vice president. OK, so is that the vice president that took over? Hold on. So who took over? OK, former vice president. So that may have been the vice president he had before. So maybe the current vice president is not the guy that took over. It's somebody else. OK, so according to the Constitution, this session should be the vice president, the current vice president. I can't pronounce his name at all, but you can see it on the screen before you, a supporter of Grace Mugabe. But then PF chief whip Leveron Matuke told Reuters news agency that Mr. Menengawa would be in office within 48 hours. And then there's another article here. It says Emerson Menengawa, the crocodile who's not back. Speaking from an undisclosed location earlier on Tuesday, Mr. Menengawa said he had fled abroad two weeks ago when he learned of a plot to kill him. Now, the whole thing about him coming into office, Mr. Menengawa, I think he may be somebody that would not allow Grace to come in. That may have been the whole thing. People may have seen that Mugabe is going to be on his way out. Maybe he die soon or whatever the case may be. They did not want Grace Mugabe, who is Mr. Mugabe's wife, to come into office. Now, I probably wouldn't want her either since she's going to South Africa 
and beating girls in the head with an extension cord. Maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but you be the judge. And I'll leave a link to this article from The Guardian about the so-called alleged assault in the description box below so you're able to read it for yourself. But let's get back to the article about Mugabe resigning. A subhead, a city sings, driving through Harare, the cheers and the blaring car horn signal the end of the Mugabe era. I also saw Vuvuzelas, remember that from the World Cup? People were in the streets blowing nose. It was a whole big mess. The man who dominated Zimbabwe for so long has already begun to fade into history here. It is a city singing with the noise of joy. Exactly a week after the military first moved against President Mugabe, I was standing in parliament as legislators debated the motion to impeach him. And this is from a person named Fergal Keane, BBC Africa editor, Harare, which is in Zimbabwe. I think that's the capital of Zimbabwe. If wrong about that, let me know in the box. Back to the article. Suddenly, there was cheering. An usher approached the speaker and handed him a letter. He stood to speak and... We strained to hear his words. They were muffled, but momentous. Robert Mugabe had resigned. On the floor of the parliament, I met jubilant MPs. Some danced. Celebrations spilled into the hallways and out into the street. A people who endure white minority rule and then saw their independence become tyranny found themselves suddenly free. Now, let's key in on that statement right there. That's very good. Whoever wrote this, the person, uh, I can't remember the name right now, but this is very good. Okay. The whole thing about Mugabe is that when he came into office, what he did was remove the white minority from their land, specifically the white farmers. This is a whole big thing. I got emails about some people that may be in South Africa, which is not far from Zimbabwe, of course, and maybe like a neighboring nation. I think either Zimbabwe is bordered with South Africa or maybe Zambia in between. But I know it's right there. You got Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. It's all in the pretty much the same region, essentially. But the white farmers were removed from their farmland and replaced with black people. And it wasn't even necessarily black farmers. It was just like common citizens. But of course, when you remove farmers who have skills of being able to produce food, which at this point, I think Zimbabwe was known as the breadbasket of Africa. When you remove them from the land and you don't replace them with people that have that same skill or anywhere close to that same skill, like he replaced them with just regular normies. When he did that, now the country is suffering food shortages, famines, is that and the third. OK, so it was a big mess. That's why they say their independence had become tyranny, because although the white minority may have been, you know, colonizing and ruling over the black majority, Things were better in that situation because everybody had a role that they were playing and they played it well. But then when you just arbitrarily put people in there and don't replace them with anybody that can do the same thing. Now you're going to have just problem after problem after problem. You're not going to help the country go forward. That's why your independence have become tyranny. Another subhead here. Let him rest in his last days. So they pretty much know he's about to be gone. I mean, you're in Africa, 93 years old. In Africa, it's a miracle to be living that long. You got very low life expectancy in many countries like Nigeria. You're talking about 44, 45 for a male. So to be that old, I mean, come on. UK Prime Minister Theresa May said Mr. Mugabe's resignation provides Zimbabwe with an opportunity to forge a new path free of the oppression that characterized his rule. She said that former colonial power Britain, as Zimbabwe's oldest friend, will do all it can to support free and fair elections and the rebuilding of the Zimbabwean economy. Opposition leader Morgan, I can't pronounce the last name, of course, told the BBC he hoped that Zimbabwe was on a new trajectory that would include free and fair elections. He said Mr. Mugabe should be allowed to go and rest for his last days. Another reaction, I guess there's some bullet points right here. These are not articles. Um, the U.S. Embassy in Harare, the capital, said it was an historic moment and congratulated Zimbabweans who raised their voices and stated peacefully and clearly that the time for change was overdue. South Africa's main opposition Democratic Alliance welcomed the move, saying Mr. Mugabe had turned from liberator to dictator. Prominent Zimbabwean opposition politician David Kotart tweeted, we have removed a tyrant, but not yet a tyranny, meaning that the government that's still there. I mean, this brings the question up, the elephant in the room. Will anything change? 
under the new guy who was a former vice president of Mugabe? I mean, I doubt it. How are they really going to change things? What's going to be so different from Mugabe to the next guy? At least they don't have somebody has been in there for like their whole life. But some people, if you ask some Africans that live in Africa, maybe some Africans that are abroad, if you say should African leaders have term limits, some of them would say it's not really a big deal. We're not like the West. We prefer to have people that have been in there for a long time. It's not really a big deal. But I think that something needs to be done. I mean, why keep electing the guy when you have estimates of 90 percent of Zimbabweans who are unemployed, people living in abject poverty, less than what three or four dollars a day? So if that's going on, then why would you think that it's OK, you know, to let this guy over and over again at a certain point, try something else. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But at least you tried. Another quote here says civil society group, the platform for concerned citizens call for dialogue between all political parties, which it said should lead to the formation of a national transitional authority. Robert Mugabe won elections during 37 years in power, but over the past 15 years, these were marked by violence amongst political opponents. He presided over a deepening economic crisis in Zimbabwe, where people are on average 15 percent poorer now than they were in 1980. So how have they improved at all? What's improved from the time that they were known as Rhodesia? What's really going on? You know, but some people would say it's worth it to be free from outside rule and be living in worse situations than it is to be under outside rule living in better situations i mean it's a tough it's kind of tough to really decide between the two because it's like okay if you have the uk or whatever country from europe ruling you and you're doing better than you are right now do you want to go back to being ruled by outside force by a different people if it means that you're going to have a better life or do you want to stay independent and live a worse life? Tough question. However, Mr. Mugabe was not forced out after decades and powered by a popular mass movement, but rather as a result of political splits within the ZANU PF party. The leader of the influential Liberation War veterans, former allies, Mr. Mugabe, said the say after the army takeover that Mr. Mugabe was a dictator who as he became old, surrender his court to a gang of thieves around his wife. Both he and Grace, 52 years old, very young woman compared to Mugabe, uh, over 40 years older than her, are believed to be at a mansion in Harare. It has happened. Mr. Mugabe's decision to finally resign sparked joy in the streets. We are just so happy that things are finally going to change. Are, are they going to change? I mean, hopefully so. I'm not, you know, just going to be like, oh, ain't nothing going to change. I doubt that they will, but hopefully they do. But I'm not really sure that the person who was the vice president under Mugabe, who was basically doing things for him, handling the situations, probably like the governance of the country for him. I doubt that that person can change things. And what about everybody else that's in government? Anybody else that's in power? You need to do a total reformation of the whole country to get things back to how they used to be or to make things improve. Um, shout out to Zimbabwe for getting rid of uh, Mugabe. But I think some people may think that he was a good person. They think that he was the person that Zimbabwe needed. I mean, me personally, I think that if a people keep voting for a guy over and over again, maybe they want him. But at the same time, you have a lot of allegations of violence against the people. Maybe some people have not been properly informed as to what's going on with their leader. They've not been properly educated. You're talking about Zimbabwe. They said 90 percent. I read an article somewhere and I link to that in the description box below. Ninety percent of the people are unemployed. So what kind of education are they really getting that's going to prepare them to engage in a political process in a meaningful way? That's going to get somebody in there knows what they're doing. I'm not really sure, but I don't have too much more to say. I just wanted to put that story out there to let everybody know what's going on. And of course, I want to get your viewpoint on it. Do you think that Grace Mugabe will eventually end up as a president? The next election is in 2018 in September. The current person who is acting as president will have to run again. So will Mugabe's wife, will she be able to run as a president? Not quite sure. Do you think that she will be elected considering how the country had just had the president in for 37 years? People were cheering in the street that he was gone. But at the same time, people voted for him. But do you think the votes were coerced? Do you think it was because of lack of education? 
whatever your thoughts are about Mugabe, about his legacy, about what he did to the white farmers, about what the country has become after Rhodesia, now as Zimbabwe, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.